This video is going to be tailored towards the P51 uh, specifically, but also it's uh, just setting up controls in general. And I want to kind of guide you through setting up the controls uh, for the P51, the reasons why uh, I did what I did, and, and I hope this all makes sense to you. So uh, first off, uh, when I ran the installer, initially I unchecked the reduced uh, flight dynamics box. Uh, when you run the installer for the module, it will ask you if you want to do that. And, um, and when, I f when I flew it, very unstable. Um, you know, I, I come from an IL-2 background, so I'm familiar with tail draggers, and I also have the A2A P51, which has gotten tons of praise from the community as just being uh, just an incredible uh, representation of the Mustang. Uh, we have a member, John Bailey, in our organization who actually owns a P51, and I asked him to give me some feedback on what he thought about the DCS version. He loves the A2A, um, and, th and not that the, the, the DCS is is bad in a way. It's just overly sensitive, and there's ways that you can correct that uh, with your controller settings. Okay, um, the thing that developers do is that they look at the maximum and mins of of the aircraft performance. For instance, like the rudder is a, is a common thing that people have issues with, and um, we'll take a look at that right now. I'll show you. Uh, so what they'll say is, okay, well the rudder is capable of this amount of movement. That was his experience, um, and uh, you know. The first thing I want to encourage you to do is go through these uh, command um, things and program all of your buttons. The most important thing in DCS is to have everything programmed on your joysticks and it will make your frustrations go away and it will make DCS a much more enjoyable experience. Absolutely vital. In the, A10, or excuse me, in the A10, it is absolutely essential to have your CMS, um, TMS, DMS. You have to have all of that program then or else you won't be able to fly uh, like the, the way you should, the way real A-10 pilots fly. Um, for, for example, I did a whole mission and I think I'd use the keyboard commands once um, and everything else was hands-on throttle and joystick. You could see why the real combat pilots do it because it's practical. Um, so I encourage you to set that up. So I just went through here and you know assigned things uh, you know, one by one. Yeah. Uh, if you don't like the default settings for your controller, you'll have them listed here. You can also scroll over here and track IR in the mouse. Uh, you can use this clear category button. It'll clear all of the buttons for the joystick. Uh, so I just went through and said, okay, what do I need? Well, I like to have a battery switch. Um, bombing arming is obviously important. Um, and then, you know, you got the, the, gun, the trigger. So if you hit the button on your joystick, it'll actually just pop it up, whatever you have it programmed as. So, you know, trigger, pickle, uh, I have some bomb arming, which is good on hands and throttle. Uh, obviously, trim is very important in P51 because you'll be doing that a lot. Uh, and you got some communications, flaps up, flaps down, um, and things like that. So P51 relatively simpler aircraft, uh, but there's still you know a good amount that you can do. So I just encourage you to go from the top of the list all the way to the bottom and see what what's important. You know what do you need the the meat of this video however is these curves and i want to encourage you you know it may be intimidating at first um since people have ma uh, the issues with rudder specifically in the p51 i want to talk about that so you basically highlight what you want you go down here to uh, access to and this is for force feedback and uh first you assign it of course with this button but you go to access tune and here's something that may look kind of funky to you okay basically the red dot means where i'm moving the rudder uh, the actual rudder uh, joystick and the black box is the rudder in the game okay that's the actual p51 rudder if you can imagine that um, so the first thing i do is dead zone and uh, you know my rudders aren't the sturdiest that they're cytex or they're hard plastic but they do have a little bit of give um, and um, that way if i'm just wiggling my feet all of that would be movement that the nose of the aircraft would be doing so, um, but it's not. I have some leeway. So usually right around here is where I feel the real resistance of the rudder, where I feel that spring kind of kick back, and I'm using uh, my full leg muscles to move that rudder. I still have the resistance in it. That's where I want this curve to start, okay? And then it rapidly increases from there. So the dead zone gives me a little bit of play. Uh, if you're taxing down the runway and your nose is going right and left, right and left, right and left, then you want to maybe increase the dead zone. The other thing it does is it kind of puts a distance delay on when the control is put in so when you fart, when you start feeling resistance in the rudder is when you want to start seeing that black box move okay uh, saturation X you shouldn't have to worry about saturation Y is very important however um, like I said when I asked John should the p51 side slip he said no and I did a bunch of tests and 50 appears to be 
the point where, you know, I could still slip it, but it's not as pronounced as 100. Um, the other thing is, comparing this to the A2A model, which has gotten a ton of praise, um, the stability of the A2A model is significantly more, you know, and, and John being a real-life P-51 pilot uh, just says that. There's a lot of things that the aircraft does, like the bounce is way too much, and the... Um, you know, it's still in beta, so they're working on some things. But it, it, you have oscillations on the runway a lot. Uh, so what this is is the is a maximum deflection of the rudder. It's maximum allowable. Uh, so uh, what the developer does is says, well, the rudder can move 100% of the way. Well, yeah, it can. But if you're going 200 miles an hour and there's wind resistance on that rudder, you might only get it to about 50% or even 25 or 30%, depending on your on your leg strength or the situation. Um, so. Basically, the rudder is just way too sensitive. There was, I'll tell you a story, there was an IL-2 pilot, a real IL-2 pilot in World War II who got into the IL-2 series of the simulation, and he had his um, maximum deflections, this is called saturation in this, but the maximum allowable deflection of the control surface in the game to about 30 for the IL-2 itself, uh, for the pitch roll and rudder. And he said that that was the most accurate representation, as real as he could get it to simulating the aircraft. Um, so this whole, you know, pull, pull your joystick back five inches and you get like a 90 turn uh, is just not realistic. And, and, you know, especially when you have mechanical linkages or hydraulic systems, the wind resistance will fight you back. Uh, and you'll have to put some serious arm strength to try to get the aircraft to turn or, or you know, kick that rudder out to try to make it do what you, you want it to do. So it's a very physical thing. Um, at 100%, you can take off and I could just kick the rudder out and that nose is just going to go flying to the right, um, but it's just not realistic. So um, I found 50% is is much more stable. Um, I can get, I can, you know, have the P-51 on the runway. Um, it's still a little bit unstable. Uh, you have to, uh, I forget what the term is, but they, you know, your, your feet are constantly moving in the P-51, and that's true to real life. But the way it's modeled at 100% is just completely uh, unrealistic. So I would encourage you to just try it. I know other people have different hardware. Um, I have Cytex. You may have something that's more firm, you know, so maybe you can use 70% and you get a lot of resistance from your rudder pedals. I can't do that. I have to use 50. Um, it'll, it'll make more sense when you get in the aircraft. And then the curvature is just, um, you know, as you, as you reach the maximum deflection of your rudder pedals, it rapidly increases right at the end, so you get the maximum there. But right here in the meat of the, of the rudder, it'll give you a good, uh, just gradual, you can see that gradual in, uh, increase gradual increase here. So that's what the curvature does. Um, so that's the rudder most important thing. And then you got the x-axis. Um, I always do a dead zone uh, in, in some of these aircraft if they're too light. That really helps in the feeling of weight of the aircraft. Uh, and then I even, you know, the x-axis have a 90% uh, deflection maximum. I might even reduce those. And then 30 is a good just basic curvature for, for anything. Um, it just gives you a gradual curve increasing, increasing until you have maximum deflection. Uh, so I encourage you to try to try to use curvature. Um, so with that, the next video will be on uh, P-51 takeoff, and I'll demonstrate how smooth uh, I've gotten it um, from the curves and from my specific hardware setup. The other thing I want to encourage is, you know, again, the A-10, please map your buttons and axes. It's absolutely uh, important. I'll see you guys in the next video.